welcome and uh, and good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Uh, so I'm Richard Bucciarelli. I'm going to be uh, hosting and moderating this discussion, and I'm very pleased to be joined by uh, John Harley and uh, Marvin uh, Dierks. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll introduce uh, John a bit more formally in a minute, but I'd, I'd like to start with Marvin, who uh, it, it's, a, it's a, maybe a, a little known fact, but, but Mar Marvin was, was the original president of the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada, uh, founded or helped to found the association along with uh, Tony Waiters and John De Benedictus and, 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 and some others uh, a little while ago. And uh, Marvin is also involved uh, directly with Complete Sports Solutions who have partnered with us to provide not only uh, this and other online coach education, but also some in-person, uh, a really exciting in-person uh, coaching education and coach development opportunities uh, overseas for Canadians in, in, in the UK. So I thought uh, I'd let Marvin speak a little bit more about that to uh, anyone who's uh, watching, listening at home, and anyone who sees this recording, and, and then we'll go from there. Well, uh, thank you, Richard. Um, I really do appreciate the introduction. And yes, I cannot deny that I was the, the original founding president of the NSCAC many, many years ago, back in 1994. So uh, it's it's a shady memory, but uh, pretty exciting times. It's so good to see that the organization is thriving as it is. Um, having said that, I currently uh, represent Complete Sports Solutions in Canada. Uh, we are a, um, a elite tour business, uh, and we are delighted to be able to partner with the SCAC in support of coaching education in Canada. This is the inaugural seminar uh, with our featured guest, John Harley, and we hope the first of many over years uh, that will bring uh, those that are involved in coaching and administering the game at the highest levels to, to our uh, membership. And so in support of Coaching Education Canada, I want to welcome you all and uh, introduce you to CSS. The last thing I, I'll, I'll mention uh, is uh, that we'll end our, our commercial break, if you like, uh, is that we are offering uh, NSCAC on tour in the spring of 2025. It's uh, 10 days in the UK, uh, loaded with uh, coach education seminars, uh, training observation, games, lots of time for sightseeing and socializing as well, but a coaching education immersion opportunity. And if you'd like to know more about it, just go to the NSCAC website and click through on the CSA, CSS links and uh, reference NSCAC on tour and we'll share all the information with you. Also, if you have clubs or teams that are interested in travel, We'd like you to think of us first. And um, again, information opportunities available on the website. Richard, I hope I haven't taken too much time around that. Everybody's quite excited to hear John, I'm sure. And I should probably just get out of the way now. Not a problem at all. Thank you, Marvin. All right. So uh, it's just video. And uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll quickly introduce uh, uh, our guest uh, today, uh, John Harleys, who has had and I, I believe I counted correctly, is about a 16-year professional playing career in England, uh, right? So, <laughs> with, yeah. <laughs> with, with several different clubs, uh, uh, including uh, Chelsea and, and including uh, a club, uh, Portsmouth, where, where he's now the assistant coach. So a successful uh, playing career at, 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 uh, at the highest level and, and, and coach, uh, of course, a coaching career also at the highest level. And uh, we're very happy to be joined by John. and, and uh, uh, with a very interesting topic of discussion, I think for coaches, which is goal kicks, why play short? So uh, welcome, John. And uh, maybe, you know, you have the question up on the screen now, so perhaps you can get started with that. <laughs> okay, no, well, uh, thanks for having me uh, to start with. And also, you no, know, to everyone who's come on, it's, uh, it's, it's great because it doesn't sound like an interesting subject. I'm going to talk for... 45, 50 minutes or whatever it may be about goal kicks. I've, it doesn't sound fun, but it, it genuinely is um, something I feel quite passionate, uh, passionately about. And um, I think the more we can educate, not just coaches, but even fans, um, why we do it, the, uh, the better um, we can improve the game more. So, so um, before I even start, just a little bit of context about how this came about. So um, I actually retired from playing probably, I think it was like 10 and a half years ago, my last actual playing club was Portsmouth. 
Um, so I went into Chelsea and I'd been coaching there for 10 years. And as they do with uh, a lot of their coaches, after a period of time, rather than just have you coaching uh, consistently, um, you know, kind of like one year follows into the next year, after a period, they, they like to take a coach and take him away from um, working within the academy and expose them to something else. So as an example, we've... Um, one of the coaches about five, six years back went to work as the as a first team coach at with Tess Arnhem in Holland. Um, done a really good job actually. They I think they won their first trophy in a hundred years. We um one of the coaches took a year out to go and study uh, a link between um, American sports and how we can bring um, sort of the individual program they have within their training into football and also within that period. Uh, work with the England, I think it was under 18 set up. So um, coaches that do various things too. I was pulled in um, after uh, 10 years anyway and uh, had kind of been told that I wasn't going to be coaching for next season. So I was really like disappointed at first, but the idea is to develop me. And my what um, I was asked to do amongst many projects was to go into various clubs and just to see what we can take um, from their technical programme to add to ours. Um, this is at Chelsea, obviously. So within that period, the, the constant um, issue that clubs were having was about goal kicks and how um, they were struggling, how the fans were always getting on their back. Um, but the coaches, the teams I wanted to go to, played football the way that I want football to be played. Um, so they all wanted to play short. So it, it, it was the real issue um so I, I decided basically just to study it and all my study visits were around um goal kicks and i'll add to it build up phase um because they're linked um the only difference obviously a goal kick you can be offside build up phase offside uh, comes into play that's apart from that everything's exactly the same obviously you've got the 18 yard box as well but um they're they're really strongly linked so Within them studies, these were uh, I'd probably attached Portsmouth to that now because they've uh, given me the platform to, um, to you know put it, everything into practice. But th within the studies, obviously working at Chelsea, I've um, spent a lot of time with the uh, the stats department there, and you know the, the the analysts, and they they went through the computer. Literally, was left uh, I think for about three days solid. He put a program in, and it studied. Um, so within this program. Over the course of, I think the rule change for goal kicks was in 2019, um, and we studied the top 20 leagues, I think, or it may have been 50 leagues. Anyway, 197,000 goal kicks we went through, and um, to get all the like, so it, it, it's basically it covers everything. So that's um, the, the the detail there. Um, a real another great help to me was, uh, and I think you've got Eric uh, Ramsey coming on um, to present something at some point on player development from Man U. So he's a friend of mine, really, uh, well, I'd say he's a great young coach, worked with um, the Wales national team. But he, he opened up uh, a little bit to me about Ten Hag and how he likes um, building up. Um, obviously, at United um, gave me some ideas. But one of the key things that he said um, about it is, that engrossed in um, build-up, that he he's actually looks to play midfielders in central defence areas. Martinez being one that he brought in, um, who there was a lot of eyebrows raised in in England when when that happened. The, a five foot seven inch central defender just doesn't happen over here. And then and then the his other favoured pairing at the at this time was uh, Lindelof, who I think is Scandinavian anyway. But when he was um, brought up his academy uh, uh, position was always a midfielder so sort of going off on one when I first put this presentation together um, John Terry was in the building at Chelsea so I presented this to him and he said you know what I'm looking at this and I'm watching football and it hurts me a little bit but I can see them just getting rid of defenders and just playing midfielders at the back and I've like, seen him just smiling like well do you know what John it's actually happening already. Um, but the key thing around this presentation isn't about let's get rid of defenders. It's not that at all. My actual research was about, because I want to, working within the academy at the time, I want to develop defenders to be able to, um, you know, uh, play in uh, the current and the future game. 
so so that that was obviously that um Brighton are just the best. They're, they're the best at building up. So if you ever get a chance, want to watch goal kicks, they are unbelievable. They've not got the best players, but they're just um, ridiculous to watch. And and I'll show a little bit tactically on them later. Um, and then probably the last key one here was uh, final. So when I went into Portsmouth, I'd been working 10 years as an academy coach, done all this studying on you know why we play out, why we build up. And all, all the stats and everything backs that we should play short from goal kicks. So I remember first game into uh, Portsmouth, we dropped six players back, we passed the ball sideways, then it went back to the keeper. Next minute, the whole threatening is about 10,000 in the stand, just start booing. And I look at the manager and he, we look at each other. I'm like, oh my God, like this is like the whole of my footballing philosophy and they're just booing it on my first game. <laughs> so um to final I, I went to um another good friend of mine. So if you get a chance, uh, the under 21s coach at final, the, uh, a lad called Melvin Bowl, he um he helped me come up with some some ideas which we've put into practice and it and it's a bit of a happy medium and and I, I think we've got a great way of playing out now at Portsmouth. Um it's not something I can uh, completely share because it uh, around our playing style, but we've got different variations depending on what teams do. So um, we keep that in house, but uh, but final we're, we're a massive help. Thank you for watching this short preview video from the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. To see the full video, plus have access to hundreds of other coaching videos, blogs, webinars, and podcasts plus free and discounted coach education courses and other soccer merchandise, plus to have exclusive access to register for all future NSCAC conventions, both live and online, click on the link below to become a member of the NSCAC today. Also, please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as your continued support allows us to continue to provide coach education and coach development resources to soccer coaches across Canada and worldwide. Thank you again for your continued support and we look forward to seeing you at future NSCAC events.